Watch as two young girls wander through the wooded area of their communal society. Look at this serene tranquility. What mysteries lie beneath the commune's plasticity? Let's take a look. Will Nye the History Guy? Will Nye the History Guy? Will, 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 will Nye the History Guy? History rules. Will Nye the History Guy? War of 1812 began in 1812. Will, 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 Will. I the history guy. Will, 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 Thank you for joining us today on a new episode of Will Nye the History Guy. This week we'll be continuing with our theme of the antebellum period in America. Today's topic is communal societies. A communal society is an intentional community of people living together, sharing common interests, property, possessions, resources, and even money. We've got a great show set up for you today. We will inform you about what a communal society is and how they work, especially the Oneida Society. Uh, Will, Will, it's the Oneida Society especially the Oneida Society. We will also have private interviews and special behind-the-scenes footage of the Oneida Society itself. Let's get a frame of reference before we dive into this topic. The idea of communal living first truly developed during the antebellum period, which is historically defined as the period between the War of 1812 and the Civil War. John Humphrey Noyes, Bronson Alcott, and Robert Owen were all famous men who created communal societies and thought they were necessary for an effective world. Let's take a closer look at John Noyes and the Oneida Society. John Noyes lived during the Second Great Awakening, which evolved his views to the Christian sect of perfectionism. Perfectionism is the belief that people become sinless once they are imputed with the Lord. His underlying goal in creating a communal society was to duplicate a city of heaven on earth. Noyes was very concerned with God and how to please him. The United Society was created in 1841 based off John's views. The society was one of the most long-lasting and arguably most effective communal societies of the time. The United Society was created on religious principles. All of the rules and requirements of the community were strictly based off of Christianity. I'm here with Mr. Noyes, founder and leader of the United Perfectionists. Mr. Noyes, please call me John. So Mr. Noyes, what were your thoughts going into creating this society? Well, Bill, I mean, Will, I really wasn't happy with my relationship with God and the way that society was treating me. So, what do you do whenever you're unhappy? Of course, you create your own communal society. Right. So you created the community with intentions of maintaining a Christian religious environment? <laughs> well, that would be correct. Do you feel that it was easy to enforce this on your people? Well, yes. They're all a part of my community because they believed in the same ideas. ideas. Well, it appears that's all the time we have today. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, Will. It's been a pleasure. Please consider the following. Everyone in the United Society had their own place and specific job. Everyone was equal. The main economic strengths including making steel traps for hunting, silk textiles, food preserves, and making silverware. They were very successful economically during that time. Noise also believed that there would be no marriage in heaven, so that means that there is no marriage in the community. Sexual relations were open. They believed that everyone should be the parent to a child. The Uniteds were like one big family. I was a member of the Oneida community. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when I agreed to live here and abide by their rules. I agreed with their ideas, of course, but it was a big change for my life before this community. The Oneida Society was vastly different from society as many people knew it. While before joining the commune, they were accustomed to their specific job and their role in society to serve themselves, they now played a role in serving the greater community. When I say I liked my decision of moving into the commune, I would say yes and no. 
my life before the commune was really rough. I was an independent mother and I had two children that I had to look after and I didn't have a job. It was just really hard. So when I heard about the Oneida community and how everybody cares for each other and how it's a happy place with so much support, I figured it would be a great idea to move my kids there so that they could finally um, receive the love that they deserve. But it was happy at first, it was all great and wonderful, and everybody supported each other, but after a while, everything turned awful, um, which is why I left. It was difficult to change my way of living, but it was really great being able to express my feelings in a community that shared the same thoughts and ideas as me. So, who's the audience for this supposed to be again? There's a rather large demographic. Right, um, but you can promise that my identity won't be revealed, right? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. We will all make sure that that happens. Make sure you come over here and sign some papers. I'm sorry, what? What was that? Now that we've taken a look at some of the principal ideas and personal views of the society, it's now time to take a look at how it affected those outside of the society, and also how it affected America itself. Affected America itself. Affected America itself. So, uh... Miss Phalange, Regina Phalange. Ah, Will Nye, history guy. Ah, yes, Miss Phalange. So, you're an anthropologist. Can you tell us what that means? Yes. I study human behavior and social norms. So, what are your views on communal groups, more specifically the Oneida Society? I think their ideas and goals as a community are excellent and actually in good faith of humanity. I really think that they can appeal to lots of different people and audiences. So why do you think that they've proven to be so unsuccessful? In actuality, communal societies have proven to be very successful. For instance, Oneida has had extraordinary economic gains. However, most of the problems lie in longevity. While the community can be successful, it's usually only for a very short period of time. Could you please explain that further? While the thoughts and actions of a commune may be in good faith, oftentimes the actions taken to, to achieve those goals may be a little off base. At the beginning of a society, it is much easier for people to share everything and have complete equality. The fact of the matter is that people are naturally selfish and they crave power. What begins as an innocent hope to provide a safe haven for the corrupted society inevitably becomes a corrupted society itself. So why do you think these ideals are so influential today? And what do you think the biggest impact of these societies have been? I think the concept remains so influential because many of those communal societies embodied ideals that we can all easily relate to across time. Wanting equality, freedom from authority, individuality, and a group of people similar to yourself that you can rely on are things that people in minority groups have struggled with forever. I think that its largest impact has been proving that in America, we can take individualism almost as far to the extreme as we want. How transcendentalist. Right. It has showed us that societies with equality, shared labor, and common experiences can happen and function. So why shouldn't we work towards that on a continental scale? Or even global? And that's what some people did. Slowly, but surely, people have worked towards that, and they still continue to, today. Did you know that? The members of the United Society frequently meet to listen to the sermons of their religious leaders. During this time, they would learn about how to live their lives by serving God and each other. Another common practice found in the commune is known as critical reviews or criticisms. These sessions are when members would criticize another member of the society. This held a therapeutic value by allowing the members to, re to release build-up anger and stress they would not otherwise be able to express. A principle followed by the commune members was to live life without anger or resentment. This was difficult at times, so the criticisms allowed for a small release of hate. It, was, it also was a way to shame members who did not follow the rules and exercise social control. Now you know! When the Oneida community first came here, you can assume that I was kind of thrown off. I mean, our entire community thought that maybe they'd try to get us to join and come door to door and preach to us that Jesus was about to come to earth and the best place to be when that happened was their community. But they actually seemed pretty normal, honestly. And we thought maybe they'd try to steal our food and stuff, but they had their own, you know, system set up where they grew their own food and made their own silverware. So they weren't really disturbing us anyways. But soon enough, rumors started to spread around about their marriage system, and the whole thing was pretty disturbing. I mean, every woman's married to every man. That's just not right. That's not ethical. And so we started to, you know, kind of rebel against them. Not really rebel, but 
we were against their views and we wanted to divide them up and it eventually led to their um, breakup, which I think is for the best because, I mean, that marriage system is just not right. And so, I mean, they're still kind of around. They have a joint stock company, but it doesn't really bother us anymore because there's no marriage system or anything called complex marriage. So, it's okay. Thank you for watching another episode of Will My the History Guy. Be sure to check out the Oneida Community Mansion House, a national historic landmark in Oneida, New York. Will Nye the History Guy. Will Nye the History Guy. Will, 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 will